Greetings, all. Today, we will be examining the common water ghost-type Pokémon Frillish and its relatively rare evolution, Jellicent, collectively known as the Floating Pokémon. Frillish and Jellicent share a basic body plan that is similar to other species of true jellyfish, with a trio of fin-like tentacles at the base of their body that hides a powerful pump that they use to take in and expel seawater in order to move around, with an additional pair on their upper bodies used for steering and grabbing onto objects with surprising force. Their main bodies are almost veil-like in their texture and appearance, and their heads are bulbous in form, with a crown-like protrusion at the top, a fur-like collar at the base of their necks, and a pair of functioning eyes that allow them to see decently well at the surface, though they are better designed to function in limited light conditions, such as at the bottom of cold ocean waters where they normally nest. While they do possess visible mouths, these creatures prefer to absorb nutrients and energy directly through their outer skin, given the abnormal way in which they typically acquire their nutrition. Their evolved form gelicent have a similar body structure, but their heads are much larger in size compared to the rest of their body, and the frill-like structure that once ringed their necks have now become a part of their bulbous heads, while the shape and form they take differs between males and females. While it is not uncommon to see in the animal kingdom, the members of the Frillish family demonstrate an extremely apparent form of sexual dimorphism between their two sexes. For both Frillish and Jellicent, their body colors are different for one thing, with males only being blue in color, and females always being pink. Between these two evolutionary states though, the differences go even further. For Frillish, the markings on their body and mouth shape differ, as while male Frillish have small marked lines protruding upwards from their eyes, and their mouth is in the shape of a frown, Females have these protrusions coming from the bottom of their eyes and are curved in form, with their mouths stuck in what looks to be a permanent smile. For male Jellicent, the mouths of these creatures are completely hidden by the frill of tissue that surrounds their head, while females have not one but two markings extending from the bottom of the eyes and a larger harp-shaped marking on their heads surrounding their otherwise small, indistinguishable mouths. While one might believe that the differences in appearance might otherwise mean something to these creatures, in truth, Color is something that is not readily observed in the dark depths of the waters they occupy, so it would make no sense biologically for this outward difference in appearance. Instead, the ghost-type nature of these creatures is what is responsible for this, as their unique powers cause their emotional energies to be displayed outward, meaning that their body color is actually a reflection of their overall personality. This is quite clear when observing these creatures and working with them, as while males in this family tend to be cold and neutral in tone, the females are much friendlier and even somewhat caring in the right circumstances. While it is easy to understand why these creatures are classified as water types, as their bodies are mostly filled with seawater that acts to keep them internally suspended and can restore their energy in the right cases, explaining why they can possess water absorb as a base ability and damp as a hidden ability, their ghost type attributes are a bit harder to fully explain. Unlike most other ghost types, these creatures are fully organic and very much alive, so they are not ghosts in the traditional sense. Instead, their abnormal attributes are connected to their incredible life-draining powers, as they are able to absorb all the vital energies out of a target as a bundled force, referred to as life energy, reducing them to little more than a husk, which is indicated at least partially by their capacity to naturally learn the absorb attack early in life. This is also reflective of their ability to easily and readily harness spiritual energy in order to attack and defend themselves, and when combined with their thin bodies, it can grant them both the offensive and defensive attributes of the ghost type, even if it is still not fully understood how, as is much of the physical nature of ghost types. Regardless, it is a bad idea to go near them, as their arms contain potent nematocysts that release a paralyzing toxin when activated, immobilizing targets as soon as they can wrap their appendages around them. This is further connected to their abilities, as it allows them to potentially have cursed body as a base ability, putting the best offenses of their opposition in jeopardy if they dare to make direct contact with them. In terms of their stats, Jellicent in particular are fairly decent Pokémon, but most of their stats are below average for a fully evolved Pokémon of their type. The only exceptions are their base HP and special defense stats, which are both above average for a fully evolved water and ghost type Pokémon. This is primarily due to their bodies being filled mostly with water, which grants them a hearty amount of stamina to draw from and good resistance against energy-based attacks. They might not be the most offensive of Pokémon, but they can still take quite a bit of special damage before they fall, and can use that to make the most of the limited move variety they possess. Because their bodies are still fairly frail at a young age, Frillish are primarily ambush predators, relying on the stinging nematocysts contained in their veil-like arms to make quick work of anything they can successfully attack. These creatures will generally remain somewhat close to the surface when hunting, just deep enough for them to be completely hidden from view, 
and wait for something to come near the surface of the water. When they spot their prey, they quickly release a jet of water from the bodies to burst upward towards the target, and before they can react, they wrap their arms around them with a tight embrace, triggering all of their invisible nematocysts simultaneously and injecting them with their powerful paralyzing toxin to immobilize them almost instantly. As the prey slowly succumbs to drowning, Frillish will bring them down to their nesting grounds, five miles below the surface of the water, draining their life energy all the while. The only reason why they don't outright kill their prey is that they get more of the life energy from them while they are still alive, as a large portion of it is lost when the prey actually dies. This can make these creatures a serious threat in many cases, but they are thankfully smart enough to only attack something they know they can handle, as larger life forms will be ignored completely if they choose to or are capable of putting up a fight. Unlike Frillish, Jellicent are not so picky about what kind of prey they choose to attack, as they are large enough and possess strong enough poisons that they can drown even a Wailord on their own, Though at the same time, they can also be a bit safer, as they have been also known to rarely dine on krill and seaweed for specific nutrients pertinent to their growth. While they still rely on taking in and expelling water for locomotion, their larger forms make it easier for them to turn this into a weapon, blasting massive columns of water upwards in a powerful water spout attack that has been known to cut the hulls of battleships in half. These creatures are extremely territorial, and will attack anything that dares to pass by the nesting grounds uninvited always leaving no survivors and no trace of the ship that once carried them. Which makes sense, as they are known to make castle-like nests from the broken and sunken remains of ships they have attacked and raided, stealing away the life energy of those on board and reducing them to crumbling husks within seconds. They are even so bold that they will go and attack cruise ships and tankers that are still important if they feel like it, and will terrify fishermen even if they are just standing by the water's edge. Thankfully, these attacks are a rare enough occurrence that they are not usually a problem, and in places like the Atlantic, where their nests have been well documented, it is rare these days that a ship goes missing, provided they do not stray into their territory. While they might not be the most conventional of ghost-type Pokémon, or have much to offer in terms of move variety, the members of the Frillish family are still interesting creatures that can prove to be a bit of a hassle in the right cases. Their ability to take special attacks with relatively large HP reserves can make them a chore to attack from afar, and engaging in a close quarters confrontation can certainly be risky if they have cursed body, so caution is recommended either way. Thankfully, these beasts will generally only attack when you stray into their territory, so if you are just passing through, keeping away from them should be enough to ensure a safe voyage. Just make sure that you don't accidentally get knocked overboard or stray too close to them, as they won't think twice about taking both you and the ship down and wrapping you in the sweet embrace of death, quite literally. Thank you all for watching this video. It is always an honor to be able to speak with you all on the subject of Pokemon in a way that brings me great joy and happiness in my work. If you would like to keep tabs on past and future work, click that subscribe button, check out my work on DeviantArt, and don't be shy about following me on Twitter, where you can find pertinent announcements on upcoming work before it is officially posted. Links to both can be found in the video description. If you would like to support my work and help Miguel and I continue to produce more content for you and improve upon our presentation, please visit us at my Patreon page, which you can also find a link to in the video description. Yeah, no. With that, I thank you for watching, and I wish you well.